Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today I have a returning guest and who I love. I can't wait to have this discussion again and update and see how you guys are doing over at eBliss. This is Lori and usually with her husband, Dave, but Lori's flying solo today, but they have a team business from eBliss and we're talking FBA for eBay and for resellers and for Mercari and for Poshmark and for all the resellers. So let's just dive into it. Lori, welcome back to the Amazon Files. Thank you so much for having me again. Yeah, it's been so it's been several years. First of all, tell everybody what you do. What is eBliss? I loved how you went through the acronym of what it stood for and how that has shape shifted over the years. Yes. Okay. So eBliss is a fulfillment and storage uh, solution for resellers. Uh, we basically store your inventory and ship it when it sells. Very basic. Very similar to Amazon FBA, but our focus is on the kind of sellers who really can't use Amazon FBA because of the kind of inventory that they use. I mean, they sell basically one-offs or used mm -hmm. items, used clothes, things like that. Just a little bit of background about us. We have been eBay resellers since 2013. My husband, Dave, started the business. I joined him in 2017 and we built it to a really good rocking full-time business for ourselves. We got a good warehouse space. We had in, uh, employees. We did the whole nine yards. And at our height, I believe we had about 4,500 individually thrifted used electronics in our wow. warehouse that we were shipping on a daily basis. And when you have that many items like that, you have to be able to find them. You have to be able to process them, list them, all this stuff. So we created some really good systems and processes for that. And we were rocking. And, and one day Dave says, what if we did this, what we're doing for ourselves, for other resellers who may not want to have employees or may not want to get a warehouse and do all that. And so that's where the idea of eBliss was born. And at the time, this was, I believe, about five years ago now, because we did a lot of preparation, testing and R&D before we ever launched in October of 2020. There was nobody out there doing what we wanted to offer resellers. So that's where the idea started. We launched in October 2020 and we have we started one place and we really have evolved over the, the last three years to help meet the needs of the resellers out there and how they've evolved as well. Yeah. So you guys have since added platforms. I know you started with eBay and you guys yourself and you've had built your own well-oiled machine and now you're like, okay, let's help others and walk about, walk with us with the clunkiness of that at first. I always like to peel behind the curtain and be like, this all sounds great and everything, yeah. but you know, onboarding those full, full clients and really after being business for four plus years now, you guys really, you guys have really honed in on what you do, but you know, in the beginning, there was some clunky parts. Let's talk about those. Definitely. When we first started, before we ever launched, and this is why we called it eBliss, is we wanted to do it all because there was mm -hmm. literally nobody doing that. And we thought, wouldn't that be great if we could list, store, and ship everyone's inventory? So that's where the acronym came from. It was originally eBay Listing Inventory Storage and Shipping. That's mm -hmm. what it stood for. So when we first started, you had to sell on eBay. You had if you didn't own, if you didn't sell on eBay, you couldn't use us. That's mm -hmm. how narrow focused we were at the time because that's what we knew. That's what we did. So that's where we started. And honestly, I feel like that's super smart because you have to start where you are and use what you have and start there, do a beta test. If you can grow into that, great. And I know you guys have. So you start with eBay sellers and you were going to do the listing, which I think it was the first thing to go. It was. And during our beta testing process, we realized that was going to be a much bigger task to really do well at that time. So we decided to put that on the back burner and focus just on the storage and fulfillment. And I think that was a smart move too, because we really were able to hone in on how to do that for more clients over the time. Because when we first started, it was just eBay. But very soon after that, we added Poshmark as a potential uh, platform. So you didn't have to sell on eBay. You could have, you could sell just on Poshmark if that's what you want to do. And we have several clients that do that. So with those eBay and Poshmark, and then I forget exactly when, but maybe a year later, we started adding the cross-listing, the major two major soft cross-listing softwares as a primary platform to use us rather than the individual platforms. And the reason for that is, is because the way we do it, the information that we add to your SKU, basically when it comes into our warehouse, needs to go where the listing originates. Because when you cross list it, it needs to go to the other platform so that when it sells, we all know where everything is. Hmm. Anyway, so we added Vendu and we added List Perfectly. 
So those are those, those are now the great four. partnerships to be yes. able to streamline this process. Because I know part of me in my tumbleweed mind is okay, but what about this? And what about this? And we're listing here. And what if we're on Mercari? What if we're on that? And so you you've taken the the scariness out of that because I know my own self selling multiple places mm -hmm. without something like that before you add those services is okay. Where is that thing? I mean, I do jewelry, so there's like thousands of pieces <laughs> and the organization and the tagging and all that. It's oh my gosh, this is crazy mm -hmm. to sell on multiple platforms and it's okay where is that item and how do I, I take it off here and put it on here and so those services are so helpful so you guys if you don't know about these services look them up list perfectly and vendu are cross listing platforms so you can list it one place and then it distributes it everywhere and then when you sell it it takes off the platform and it really streamlines the process so make sure that you guys check those out as well no affiliates that's just a freebie <laughs> Okay, so you added some other platforms and you started to grow. Have you outgrown your space yet or did you guys start with a really big space? We started with a decent amount of space. I wish I could say we've outgrown it. <laughs> some people start small because they're like, okay, we're not sure how big this is going to get and they have to move 14 times. So I right. like how you guys thought big and then have stayed in your realm. Exactly. That's a very tricky thing when it comes to fulfillment because you start with an empty warehouse and you have to fill it in order to have it be profitable and, mm -hmm. and successful. I mean, we've had some over the three years, we've had some clients come on board and they're still here. And we've had some come on board and they're not here. And we're still getting clients coming on board every day every day, but you know, every month at least. And, and so it's because it, life changes for client for, for people. Some yeah. people stop reselling altogether. And if they stop reselling, they don't really need us. So yeah. So it's been a kind of an up and down thing. I, we'd love to say that, sorry, we're full. We have a waiting list mm -hmm. and now we have to get another warehouse. And that's what I we're feel like there's no such thing in business, man. We're always ready to accept new clients. We'll figure it out. right? <laughs> With this. I mean, yeah, we, there's, we have a lot of room for growth. I mean, there's, we're not, we're in nowhere near completely maxing out at this moment. But we're probably close to getting a halfway there, which what I would love to be a little bit farther along in the process. Mm -hmm. But it's good because we can just bring on more clients quickly because the space is there. An encouragement yeah. to you is that you guys, when it comes to businesses and companies, you guys are still in the baby stage, right? That's you're true. still under five years, you're still considered oh. a startup. So oh, yeah. I think that's really awesome that you guys are growing and you gave yourself the capacity to grow into, which right. I think some business owners don't. It's it, it's hard and scary in the beginning to invest in all this stuff and starting something and just hoping that the clients will come in. So I really love yeah. your courageousness there of just being like, no, we're going to have this thing and we're going to get it bigger. And, and you give yourself some room to grow. Yeah. And the other important thing too is we didn't want to over promise and under deliver that was very important to us because it was is a it was a new thing that to still is new a lot of people don't even know that the pro the service exists so we didn't want to be like oh we're going to do all this and then not be able to do it properly i'm not that kind of person i like to make sure everything is squared away before we even throw it out there and test the heck out of it so that was very important. I think that was smart because along the way, we've had to adjust the way we've done things due to changes either with eBay or this or that, or even the other platforms. You have to adjust and pivot as you go along. So I think we gave ourselves the time to do that, mm -hmm. which was very important. Yeah, you guys are so smart when it comes to that. There's just a lot. I mean, business is a risk. It always is, no matter what, whether you're reselling or you're starting a warehouse for people. But you know how much I love this idea, because to me, there's always I sing this all the time when I'm telling entrepreneurs, like there's always somebody that's willing to do what you hate. <laughs> and so I'll give accounting as an example. <laughs> Very true. I do not love to do that. But like my sister is like my complete opposite. Like <laughs> I like to be in front of the camera, talking to people, interviewing people. She's like anything behind the scenes that has to do with numbers is her jam. So I love that, <laughs> that there's people that are willing to do the shipping and storage because that's the biggest PETA in my business, at least, is that I do not like shipping like at all. I don't even know how I survived as a reseller all this time. It's just like the part of the thing that I don't love. I love to source and I love, I, I don't even mind like the pictures. I, I'm a word person. So I do writing listings. Some people are like, you're crazy. I'm like, no, I like to put some words in there and just like, I, even if they're small, I just like to do the word part. So after that, I'm like, I, I don't like shipping. I don't want to pick and pack every day. I just don't. And so <laughs> this is the solution. That's why I love that we got connected because this is the solution to people. So for those that are like, okay, where do I sign? What are some of the, the minimum requirements? Because I know you have to have a certain amount. So tell us what those are. But the first step though, before we even get that far with our clients, we always like to have either a Zoom or a phone call 
with our potential clients because we know that what we're doing is not really a good fit for everyone. Mm -hmm. And some people might think, oh, I want to do that. And then they find out what, what the deal is. And then they, you know, we want to just make sure that it makes sense because there is a lot of time and effort expended on both sides in order to get this started because it is a, it's a commitment. So we always like to have that call. We like to look at your, your goals, your pain points. We talk through your business, the numbers, and just generally say, you know what, this could work for you. Or, you know what, I don't think you're not selling stuff that's going to really have a lot of profit left over. Are you sure this is going to mm -hmm. be something you want to do? Because we are looking for a relationship type based client relationship. We're not transactional based. We're not just one and done because we are, we see ourselves as a partner in your reselling business. Absolutely. If you're going to entrust us with your inventory. And for some people, that is an emotional thing for them to, to get. It absolutely to is. It's funny when I'm always talking about prep centers for Amazon and when we made the jump and I, the, the story I'm always telling is I met a guy in a reseller group, like a meetup at a Panera or so, whatever it was. And we got to talking and he said to me, oh, I'm thinking of opening like a prep center for Amazon. And I would love to use you as beta and maybe you could try it. Well, you'll prep your inventory for free. I just want to see how it goes. And I was like, no, I'm good. And I I'm thinking in my head, I hate shipping, but I don't know this person or whatever. <laughs> Fast forward many years later, he was the squeaky wheel. He called me several times. We finally had some more conversations because we had a good connection there, but it was just like, I don't know if I can let go of that. That's really hard for people. Are they going to take care of my stuff? Are they going to lose it? Is it going to get damaged? Like I not seeing it feels so scary. But right. what I will say is when you take fulfillment off of your plate as a reseller, as a business owner, you grow I mean, I will tell you, I grew five times when I got a prep center because I was able to, now that I'm not shipping and storing everything and pulling and packing and shipping, I can focus on getting better inventory for my business exactly. and to, to make more money at the bottom line. Although that's, that was FBA Amazon, I can, the same thing applies to any reseller. If you don't have to do one part of the thing, you can do what you're really good at, which most of resellers are really good at sourcing. Correct. We see the good brands. We see the the forest through the trees. We see the one dollar piece of jewelry that you know is a hundred dollars, right? That's me. I'm like, I'll take that right now. <laughs> so those types of things we are good at. So let's do what we're not good at and outsource that. So I just love that you guys saw the hole in the marketplace and decided to be brave enough to say we're gonna take this on. So I know you said you have minimum requirements, y'all. Yes. Just give them a call because they. I love that you said that. It's relational because I feel like yeah. most businesses should be relational. Uh, we need to know who we're working with and they need to trust us. They need to know that you're going to take as good of care as their inventory as they would. Exactly. And, and it all comes down to trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But to get, answer your question specifically, we do require 200 listings in our warehouse at any given time. So that's the minimum floor for storage. And then we do have a 30 listing minimum for receiving every month. Mm -hmm. And that is the it for the minimums that we really get. And the reason for that is because we are we're for storage and fulfillment. When we first started, we didn't have these minimums, obviously. Yeah. And these are the types of things that we had to add over time because if the if inventory is not coming in and going out, it gets stagnant and it doesn't work. And it doesn't work for the client either. So if it's not working for the client, it's not going to work for us. So we really want to be storage and fulfillment. So we put that requirement in there to entice, entice people to, hey, we... If you want a storage facility, you could go get that down the street. Like we're storage and fulfillment. So you need to be sending us stuff so you are selling stuff so you can replenish, et cetera. So the perfect fit for this is really not your, I just dabble in eBay or things like this on the side. This is more like we are reselling nearly full time and we're moving more than we're selling more 200 or more items is a bigger deal than just a side hustle. You know what I mean? It's really more, it seems like more of a full time gig. Not necessarily full time because we have a lot of part-time sellers, lots mm -hmm. of them. They have full-time jobs and they do this on the side. And honestly, they have way more than 200. It's not, mm -hmm. that's, that's not the, the deciding factor. It's more um, what their goals are. You know what I mean? Because if they, I, I like totally lost my train of thought here. I had a really good point. Cause like we do have a lot of part-time sellers and that they, de oh, this is what it is. When we first started, we were really geared. We didn't want to take anybody who was brand new to mm -hmm. eBay. Like it doesn't, they don't need to be big. They just need to know what they're doing and be able to continue doing that. Do you know what I'm saying? So that yeah. could be at any level. That could be part-time or, or full-time. It doesn't really matter as long as they know what the deal is and how to source stuff, how to list it elsewhere so that this works. So yeah. we really never wanted to bring on people like, oh, I, I, I've never even sold anything. 
that, yeah. that, because you know how it is in the beginning, mm -hmm. there's a learning curve. So that the, we focused have and always been focused on resellers, not dabblers. Yeah. Perfect. And that's just a good way to bring clarity to that because a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to start my eBay store and I'm going to just use this right away. And a lot of people do that with, with fulfillment by Amazon. That's an option, really. You can jump right into FBA but and, and still not know what you're doing, which I don't re recommend that either, to be honest. I want people to be able to give this a three-month run. And if you're serious and if you have all that stuff, then great. But yeah, I totally hear you there. So it's not necessarily if you're full-time or part-time, that, that doesn't matter. What matters is 200 or more listings and that you're consistently going to ship stuff in. That's the thing is if you're going to keep the ball rolling and 30 items really isn't that much. I mean, that's one, a, that's like a one a day kind of thing. It's so, one box yeah. basically. And we pay for that inbound shipping too. So it's, yeah, you know, why not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So why not for sure? Okay. So let's peek behind the curtain a bit more. I'm going to go like personal for a second. So <laughs> just, but how is it working side by side with your husband all the time? <laughs> <laughs> to answer that question, you have to know how we first met, okay. which was actually at work. <laughs> That's fun. But I was a Technically, I was 17. He forgets that. But I was a senior in high school. He was in college and we were working at Sears. Mm -hmm. And so we worked together for five years in that environment. So that's how it started. So it's second nature. And then later on, we actually worked together again in a more corporate setting at Northwestern Mutual. Mm -hmm. So our boss was the same person. We had the same boss. And the, but this is the first time we ever had a business together, which is a very different animal. Mm -hmm. We're, we have to account to each other. We, we are each other's bosses. The reason it works out really well for us in particular is because we're total opposites when it comes to our skill sets, our personalities, what we like to do. Like you said, I am generally speaking, like I like to do the back end stuff. Oh, I'm, I'm in the weeds. I'm processes. I'm like executing stuff. He's big picture, vision, broad strokes, that sort of thing. And he's just by the seat of his pants. And I'm like regimented. That <laughs> Duckies in a row. Right? We're, we're like, he always says I'm a an A personality and he's yeah. a type C. So together yeah. we make a type B. <laughs> he always says. <laughs> I don't know if it's true, but it is, it does. We honestly wouldn't want it any other way. If I'm being honest, it's not roses a hundred percent of the time. There are times where it's rough because we are so close and we're so into it, to what we're doing. We're so close to it. And it's, this is our bait, another baby type of thing. So sometimes we have to, we have, just like any couple has times where they need to communicate better or get through mm -hmm. things that happens too. But honestly, because we have the same vision and we want the same thing to happen, it's really easy to work yeah. together. I know a lot of people say, oh, I could never work with my spouse, that type of thing, but we wouldn't want it any other way. That is so awesome. I really love that testimony there because I, I we, my husband and I, he was laid off for a time and helped me in the Amazon business. And as long as we were doing completely different tasks, everything mm. was great. See, cause right. that's how he's, I think that just happens in marriage, right? It's like the yin to your gang, right? Like I'm more like Dave for sure. <laughs> Big visionary, seat of my pants, 10,000 foot view, a little bit willy nilly, organized chaos. And he's mm -hmm. more like, we need a plan. We need a structure. <laughs> we need a this, we need this. So there's definitely tasks geared towards what he he likes to do and what he's really good at and then what I do there and we had just whether if people haven't worked together or not if you've ever done a home rental project together mm. it's the same thing yeah, <laughs> so sure. you gotta work to learn to work in it together so I love hearing that and so what are um some of the milestones you guys are really proud of in eBliss huh that's a great question I mean I think we just recently this is something we didn't talk about but we've been storage and fulfillment this whole time and we've really done really well and I think we've gotten that down and like I said when we first started we wanted to do the listing so we have actually re revisited that option we recently offered to do photos for our clients Ooh. and that's something that's we had been in the works for a while but it took a while to figure out really the best way to do it on mass for and because we have all these different platforms and like how do you do it for everybody like the same because you have to keep your cost down right because otherwise it's not affordable for the client so I'm pretty that milestone adding those photos and then also very recently we are also offering the listing portion to our existing clients and very soon we'll be able to offer that to all our clients even the new ones coming on right now it's just for our existing ones but so basically we're got we finally achieved the original vision very very soon of being a complete one stop shop for all the listing or reselling needs and that's why we call this solutions because we didn't want to just be one mm -hmm. thing i think that was a pretty good milestone i mean that we've reached at this point and hopefully it is just going to go even further from now 
eBay sellers. Did you hear that? For the people in the back, they're taking pictures. So literally I can go and source and grab my piles and make my initial listings and send that stuff to you guys. And you're going to picture it and all that and just kind of push go on those listings when I'm done. I mean, I love this. Uh, I'll be fully honest. I can't start with you guys yet because I actually have been just been going to a hundred, hundred listing goal. eBay is like my third kind of business or whatever. It's just, mm -hmm. I still love doing it and I'm doing jewelry and I've started whatnot. I don't know if you've ever seen whatnot to live selling. Yep. Uh, and that's been really fun. And it's really easy to get rid of jewelry that way. And there's a lot of jewelry hounds out there and collectors, and that's just a fun platform to be able to do that. But sure. I also realize I'm leaving so much meat on the bone with that because of the platform. Things go by faster. They sell a little bit cheaper, but it's a, it's a turn and burn rather than like the, what, what, what is the word I'm thinking of? Fast nickel or slow dime is what I'm thinking of. And so there's yep. like, got to be a balance of that because I have some yes. really good stuff that I don't mm -hmm. want to auction off. I want, I'll right. sit and hold it for a while. Exactly. And so I'm telling you what, I am going to be knocking on that door when I get up to 200 because that's just a slow and steady wins the race for me. I really mm -hmm. started hitting eBay hard again last summer. Uh, mm -hmm. I did a flips challenge with Chris Green and that was super fun. And it lit the fire under me because I'm accountable because I'm teaching people. I'm like, I'm listing this stuff. And so it really uh, got me consistent again. So I'm really because that's the part that holds me back. I'll be honest. It the whole part that holds me back is I'm not home a lot or like in the summer we travel and I don't want to be anchored to the fact that I got to ship stuff or have dings because people are mad that I didn't ship out within four days and things like that. So I thought this is really the key to that and knowing that it can be across multiple platforms is really awesome. That's the that's the wonder that the great thing about the way we've established this is you literally can sell anywhere. Mm. There are no limitations to where you can sell. Now, exactly how the process works, you know, it's one way for eBay, it's another way for Poshmark, and then another way for all the other platforms. But as long as you can send us a label and the SKU information for your item, we can ship it. Yeah. That's great. So, so that even means that even if you're not connected, I mean, I know that some people do Depop and there's, what is this other one that... I was new to me, but everyone's else. Are you living under a rock? I didn't hear of that. Well, I don't know. It's there, just... curtsy, obviously the old ones, Macari, Kitizen. I mean, yeah, I feel like it was one of those, like the yeah. Kitizen or something. I don't know. Something that was like, I have no idea what that is. Um, there's one that was super high end stuff, not like the real. I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. I'm yeah. talking more about like higher end art and you know, Chinese artifacts from years ago, oh. almost like museum quality stuff. Oh, like okay. Super high end. But hmm. hey, I mean, if it's stored by someone else, y'all can ship it, right? Sure. <laughs> no, you well, do have some size limitations, right? Let's talk about those for a second. Yeah, that. See, when we we modeled Eblis after what we were doing which was basically small electronics. So in order to maximize the amount of space in our warehouse and everything else, we did have to institute, and this was from the very beginning, and that hasn't changed, a size and weight limitation to the listing. And that's six pounds, okay? So we just don't want big, heavy, clunky stuff. I don't send us no a patio bread furniture. pan maker, <laughs> like a bread right. maker or something like that. You know what I mean? And then the size, we use a bag and tag system. So the everything has to fit in one of our size bags. The largest size bags is approximately 14 by 20. So it has to fit in that bag in order to send it into us. Now, if you want to sell something that's bigger than that, by all means, keep it and you mm -hmm. ship it. It's not like an all or nothing proposition. So. And if they send all the small stuff to you, then they have more room for the big stuff at wherever they're storing it now. That's, That's what I thought cool. of. I thought, gosh, if I could get rid of a lot of this jewelry and get it like listed and out there, then yeah. I would have plenty of room to to have some of the bigger stuff that yeah. I don't have too many things that are that big, but enough. But a lot of because we never want to dictate what you can and can't sell anywhere. That would not help you. And a lot of times those big things are big money. You want to sell something that doesn't qualify by all means do that. Yeah. And that I think that helps even with the balance. I mean, I'm thinking of that reseller that are, they're selling 2000 items a month and they're really just hustling and that's a lot of packaging and that's a lot of stuff to where it's like, what if they could reduce that by 75% sending most of it to you and saying, okay, we're now we're only set. How much more can you grow? This is the same thing with me. I did it myself with the FBA and I have numbers like before and after. And the chart literally goes like this. It dips for a time because you have to pay the money and you have to work out the kinks there. But mm -hmm. then once you get there it's just so much more time i can do what i love sourcing and then having you guys ship so what right. is the best way for people to reach out and have that zoom or have that phone call with you guys to see if it's a good fit yeah the best way is to go to our website eblissreseller.com 
think it's a pretty decent website. It has a lot of great information on it. There's a spot where you can fill out a little form. So I'll get your information and then we will respond and say, hey, let's schedule a call and, and we'll take it from there. Hopefully the, inf the information on the website gives a good basis for what anybody needs to know. But still, there's details about your person, your own business and stuff that we want to talk about. And, and that's where we go from there. Awesome. Thank you, Lori, for coming. And just, I'm so excited about what you guys are doing and how you've grown. And I can't wait to just send everybody over there. Any reseller that wants to really scale their business, this is something they should get off their plate. And you and I both know it's not an easy task to go get a warehouse, get employees. That's one of the reasons I chose fulfillment because we just, we thought of getting our own warehouse like you guys did, even like for Amazon and for like my, my, I, I point like this, y'all don't see my office, but if you did, the shame factor would probably come in full force. I have more <laughs> things in here than I know what to do with and, and they should be listed and they're not. So I'm working on that. So my whole office is my death pile. But you know, when we first thought of that, even with Amazon and even considering with eBay is what are we going to do? We have to get the place. We have to put all this front, all, all this upfront money. We have to get insurance. We have to hire people. What if they don't show up? What if I'm doing something else and then they don't show up and then I still have to do this. And then all the things I was like, what is plan B? <laughs> and so that was doing a fulfillment center at the time my buddy was starting to start it and he's okay try this and now this is like the plan b for all of the other resellers who aren't doing an amazon fba style it is just so much of a relief it's exactly that that's so true and the other thing is if you go that route you have to like you said you have to pay up you yeah. have to buy a bigger warehouse than you really need or you have to you have to have an employee even if there's no work like this with us you only pay for what you actually use yeah. And it you takes know. that pressure off. Like I understand, like for everyone that's listening, I can hear the yeah buts in their head all the time. I had them myself. So I understand. What about this? What about this? Y'all, they have answered all the questions. They didn't start yesterday. They've been here doing this for many years, resellers themselves. So not only do they have educational answers for you because they're resellers, but also because of the storing and shipment, you're not going to be the first one that has the questions. You're not going to be the first one worried about it. So just give them a call. If you have over 200 items reselled listing and across platforms, you just give them a call. It doesn't hurt you to call eBliss and just say, hey, what are my options here? And is this a good fit? Because how much more can you grow your business if you can source four days a week instead of two because you're not shipping? You're literally shipping to them. And so you're like, oh, it's if they've never, if people haven't done it, they just don't get it. <laughs> I guess that's, that's what I want to say. It's that is so true that you can't realize what kind of freedom you have until you have it. Yeah. That's really oh. true. It's you don't really realize. That's one of the things that once the fulfillment was taken off my plate, I could not believe. I'm like, I have all this time, I can bring more products to the table. I can do more research. I can do better listings. And that's really when our business went from six figures to seven. We weren't able at that point to really, we didn't have enough manpower thinking warehouse or higher, or what are we going to do? And that was the move. And after about three to six months, it didn't take long to really even out and then just go for the, I mean, pallets were coming in there and we're like, we're not receiving pallets. This is great. <laughs> I mean, I never had a warehouse. It was always at my house. We actually knocked out a wall between two my office and there's a room right there and one of my kids moved down to the basement and they were fine with that and we blew off the wall and this was like our second shipping room because there, there was no room and the garage was still full so it was like okay i'm like we can't keep living like this i mean growth is good but it does have growing pains That's and true. you guys are are bringing i mean i just love this is so brilliant i'm so glad that you guys are doing this and that it's an option and that we get to tell people about it so you guys go to eblessreseller.com and make sure you talk to lori let them know that you heard us on the Amazon files because that's just helpful for them. They need to know that this is good time spent with hanging out here. So thank you so much for coming again and updating us. And I wish you nothing but the amazing best. And I hope you get tons of clients. And if you ever need anything, I'm right here. Tell Dave I said hi. Um, I will. Oh, and by the way, you guys, you have to follow their Instagram. Oh my gosh, Dave is hilarious. Like you have to watch the Instagram. These two are so funny. And so you want to be able to do that. They have, they're always posting stuff and it's always a, a, a good time. I just like to watch things that are entertaining. And it's like subject matter is to be determined, but I just like to laugh and be entertained. So you guys are fun. Again, e e eblissreseller.com. You guys, I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing. I don't take that for granted. Thank you for listening to the Amazon Files and we'll see you guys same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.